Hi, it's Stephen Caleb from Brownells here, bringing you a tech tip today that was inspired by one of our viewers. And Tom, this is for you. We're going to talk about choke tubes and what you can put through them. Yeah, and this is kind of a tricky topic because a lot of it is manufacturer dependent. There's no just, you know, straight up, this is the answer, this is what you can do kind of thing. Uh, but we'll give you some general guidelines to go by that'll definitely help you out. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the big things is steel shot. Yeah. Because if you're a waterfowler, you got to use steel shot. Got to use steel shot. And as a general rule, uh, steel shot patterns tighter than lead shot. So you always need to go out and pattern your shotgun, first of all. And we'll do something on that in the future, probably. Uh, but as a general rule, so since it patterns tighter, you actually go a step down in constriction when shooting steel shot. So for example, uh, if you're shooting improve modified and lead then in steel you would run modified chokes and for those of you who aren't familiar the general uh, the general kind of constriction of choke tube goes from you know tightus to loosest you're looking at full improve modified modified improved cylinder and cylinder and those are the main constrictions of choke tubes there are others out there um, like um, you know, you have your turkey chokes and different things like that, and some others in between. Uh, but your turkey choke would be even tighter than, extra let's full say, yeah, like an extra then full. Then you got your card shooting tubes, which are really, really, really extra full. Yeah. I think that's the official designation. Extra, extra, extra full. Yeah, yeah. That's how, that sounds right. Uh, but the ones I mentioned before are the main types, and those are the ones we're going to be referring to here. Uh, so you can kind of plug all the other extra stuff in the middle there. Uh, but as we said, so still patterns a little bit tighter, but obviously steel is harder than lead. So when you start constricting that steel shot in the actual bore or at the muzzle, uh, you could run into some issues. And a lot of those issues right. are pattern related. And yep, actually if you squeeze it down too far, they will scatter when they come out of there. Yeah, so they kind of squeeze down and almost kind of bounce off of each other and just, you get a really yeah, that, you terrible know, Those pattern. wads are super heavy duty on steel. Yeah. So there's a lot of energy compressed there when you get at the muzzle and mm -hmm. then boom when they get free if you squeezed them down too far yeah and not to mention it can damage the choke or damage your barrel um, it, also if you're using like heavy buffered shot that heavy buffer doesn't do well through uh, that tight constriction so you got to be careful there as well and the buffer is the piece that's basically underneath your shot in the actual shell that comes out uh, so you got to be careful with those as well uh, let's uh Let's kind of talk about, I think another question here was, uh, was slugs. Slugs, again. We can talk about slugs. Um, there's two types of slugs, basic, two basic types. You've got the sabotage slugs that have a smaller projectile inside them, usually like a pistol bullet or something, mm -hmm. or some of the high-tech flex tip bullets. And then you've got the old pumpkin ball rifled slugs, which are a hollow-based big wad of lead, about yeah. an ounce. Yep. And they've got fins molded into them, so when they hit the air, they will start to spin. Yep, and then um, on top of that, you also have just the chunk of lead that's non-rifled as well. Right, and right. you still find those. You still find those, and you even have rifled choke tubes, which yes. kind of... And rifled choke tubes, uh, they'll work with any of those. You don't yeah. have to have rifled or unrifled slug to use a rifled choke tube. It'll, it'll shoot any of it. Uh, and obviously a rifled choke tube is specifically for slugs. Uh, and when you're shooting slugs, Slugs perform best out of a uh, cylinder or improved cylinder. It's not really recommended to go any tighter than that, even though most commercially manufactured slugs are okay through a modified uh, for safety reasons, right. but accuracy suffers big time whenever you do and that. And the old style slugs, you know how many of those have been put through full, full chokes? Oh yeah. And the old fixed choke guns? Yep. Yep, it's, it's definitely happened. I mean, the gun had to do double duty. It had to shoot squirrels in the fall and then deer in the winter. <laughs> it did, and it did both. Uh, yeah. But don't do that. As a general rule, improve cylinder or cylinder for slugs. Stick to that, and you'll be just fine. Yeah, and the more you distort the slug at the muzzle, the less accurate it's apt to be. Yep, so yeah, putting all that extra pressure attention on it right there at the muzzle uh, is going to do some funky stuff with the, the energy of the slug and whatnot. And, ballistics and all the technical terms and your slug's just going to go where it wants after that. So. Right. Now, bouncing back to the steel shot, mm -hmm. just for a second, a lot of people think you're going to blow up the, the muzzle of your gun if you got too much constriction there. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, you you can deform it. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily. I wouldn't say blow it up unless there's you know you dropped your muzzle in the dirt and you got it clogged or something like that. But as a general rule with steel shot, well, there's really no general rule. So this is entirely manufacturer dependent. So a lot of manufacturers will say don't shoot steel shot through anything tighter than a modified, um, and that's true for that manufacturer. Right. But then when you start looking at aftermarket choke tubes like Carlson's, for exactly. example, uh, they'll say you can shoot steel shot through any of their choke tubes. And then they'll say, you know, for full or turkey, don't shoot anything larger than a number four steel shot. Right. So it all depends on how that choke tube's manufactured and what it's made out of. Yeah, Carlson and Briley have premium tubes yes. and they're made out of better steel. Yeah, so you can, you can get away with a little bit more in those choke tubes. But in most cases, you really don't have to. Because if you're shooting that tight of a constriction, when using steel shot, your pattern's usually going to suffer. So go out, pattern your gun, and know kind of what you're know what you're getting into whenever you actually pull the trigger and send that shot down range. Uh, you should always pattern your shotgun before you actually go hunting with it, so you can see what your pattern is. And like I said, we'll we'll do a video on that in the near right. future. Right. As far as actually blowing up at the end, like I said, it's, it's not going to happen. But there is a lot of flex that happens at the end when you do that steel shot. Yep. So if you've got like an old Browning superposed or something where you've got solder joints up there holding two barrels together, oh. you don't want a lot of flexing going on up there. Yeah, you can you can definitely break that joint at the end. Yeah, so take it easy on the old guns with the fixed chokes. Um, you know, just shoot the usual stuff through that. Not, uh, I stay away from steel shot on older guns pretty much. Yeah, and uh, I think that about covers the basics of choke tubes and yeah. What's, what type of shot to use in them? That's right. You can get away with almost anything, but your results suffer if you go t too far one way or the other. Yep, there you have it. So if you have any questions or comments, anything you'd like to add, uh, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, also that notification bell. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. And thanks again, Tom.